For something like this to happen has really opened my eyes and given me a different perspective on my relationships with people, the things that I have, uh, the accomplishments I've made, the simple things. Because you never know when that's going to be taken from you. My name on Rodeo. Drop big bags, they come in Miss Pizza. My name is Renny Rucci. The biggest. Don't let nobody else tell you different. Like an IG model. Walk with a wall. Body shaped like a Coke bottle. I have my own sound. I have my own flow. Talk like this. Talk like this. They love it when I'm real. We talk like this. And I kind of set the tone for a lot of things that we hear right now. Hey, y'all. Um, I always felt like I was going to be the big one. We got a show Saturday. Saturday night. Can't be. It's everywhere. Every time I turn on the radio, it's playing. I'm trying to get talk released right now because it's going crazy on TikTok out of nowhere. Going viral was my foot in the door. I started Jack and Beat. The viral videos worked great for me because I got a deal off of them. I signed a deal without even having any original music out. A lot of bitches just put off this facade like we so cold, we so true to this game. And I'm like, nah, we human. I got kids. We gonna keep 100 over here. Because I do everything, everything for my kids on my own, I'm always on the road. That's how I make most of my income, doing shows, doing walkthroughs in the clubs, making sure I can further my career and bring in more income to take care of my kids, take care of myself, and, you know, sustain the lifestyle that I've created for them. I feel like my struggles have made me who I am as a person, a rapper, a woman, a mother. I'm really speaking from a place that I've seen and been through. I need a Curry. Run through Chanel and he dropping the 30 on bags. Another 50 up in sacks. He blowing them racks. I'm dragging his ass to the My wrist need new ice. I'm sick of the rollie. I'm thinking of petty police. Ten pointers look cheap. I need a 50 of better spaghetti on me. New water on. Got me as a sink. Being cold, now I need me a mink. In the mall, on the place that we link. So this pocket's big, so I'm making a shrink. I finally feel like I'm reaping the rewards of all the hard work and sacrifices that I've been making for my career. And this is just the beginning. called Hopkins, South Carolina. I miss you so much. <laughs> my kids are with my mom in South Carolina. When I'm on the road, any free day that I have, I make sure that I spend it with them. OK, hey, darling. Hey. Because my kid's father doesn't really play an active role in their lives, my mom has really helped me be able to keep my kids you know, in a stable environment in the same school. That's really important to me. And I also feel like my mom is nothing like anybody else's Nana. She really makes the most out of every day she has here. And she shows that to my kids. How you feeling? Cool, you know. I mean, I know you, of course you miss Luciano. It's new to me. I didn't think it was going to be this hard. What is this only been a month? Yeah, but when somebody go away and y'all don't get to see each other, the only thing y'all relying on is a phone for conversation and trying to understand everything in a couple minutes that you got to talk, it's a lot. My boyfriend is Fujiano. I was really trying to avoid dating a rapper, but because we both do the same thing, we don't have the issues that I have had in past relationships. He's brought so much light into my life and my kids, but now Fujiano has gotten arrested, and the judge gave him five years. We already in a relationship that came with a lot of different dynamics, and right now I feel like he need me to be there a little more for him than I'm used to being for anybody. So how much longer do you expect you to do this? What you mean? I'm gonna do it however long it takes. It ain't about what he expect. I ain't going nowhere. You know that's what make a relationship stronger. Getting through. And I'm not willing to let something like this interrupt what has been put in my path. Change when I get it, got a mix. Hey, now. Hey, now. What y'all doing? Who else needs one? Boy, go get you some water. Up to it, down to it. We do it because we used to it. Don't drink, drink, mother drink. I'm trying to raise a glass up. Go ahead. 
When my mom isn't playing softball, she's at her lounge. Yes, her own personal lounge. I'm always greeted by people who I may remember, I may not remember, I may not have ever even met. But that's the fun in it. That's the fun though. I'm tired. It's been a long day. Then we had our show last night. Yeah, that was a good show. Rain, yeah. I performed almost every song. So you got to keep the energy going up. So we got. We got Richmond, Virginia, Houston, and uh, Greenville. So we basically got to be on point. I'm always on point. It ain't gonna be me. Lately, I've been having shows back to back to back. Usually, whenever I can, I try to take my kids on the road with me. But right now, I can't take them with me because it would interfere with their school. Y'all have fun today? Yeah. It was fun. The game was fun. Right, wasn't it? Yeah. But I really wanted to talk to y'all because the next like two weeks, I got shows both weekends. I'm gonna try to like get here to see y'all. I think we just come to your shows. Cause it's a lot of traveling. It's like flights everywhere. It's gonna be a lot of like I got a lot of work to do during the show. I'm ready for y'all to get out of school so y'all can come home. Me too. I know it's hard for them to understand the change of things right now, but this is a sacrifice that we all have to make in order to live the life that we want to live. Y'all talk to your dad? Yeah. 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 Try calling. Yeah. I don't want to talk to him. I blocked him. Why'd you block him? I don't like him. I was going to try and talk to him, but then he started talking trash about food. And you ain't and, going for that? And I don't want to talk to him because he didn't even try to call me for my birthday. My kid's father lives 20 minutes away from the kids. You think, you know, he puts forth a little more effort. Having Fujiano, showing them the real definition of a father, this is their first time really being exposed to that type of love and relationship is so refreshing. I know it's been hard for you to deal with him being away, but I'm glad you still talk to him and stuff. Some of my friends really don't understand why I'm willing to wait however long it may take for Fujiano to come home, but I know he will always be there for my kids and love them like they're his. I'm riding this one out. I love y'all. I love y'all. That's it, Sue. Y'all have y'all stuff ready, because I'm picking y'all up when we're going home. Give me a wait, wait a minute. But y'all really gotta go upstairs so y'all can, we won't hear y'all. What's up? Just trying to take it day by day. What's up, y'all? Mm -hmm. Okay. I ain't even hear you come in. Tonight, my brother and sister are here because after my mom's birthday party, I stayed in South Carolina for a couple days, and the day I was leaving, we couldn't get in touch with my mom. My sister, my brother, I were all at my house. For some reason, it was just really strange. I got like a really eerie feeling. We filed a missing person report for her. Within 45 minutes, the officer had called and let us know that she had been in a car accident. Like she's not getting better, she's not stable, she's sitting in a trauma unit. It's really frustrating to not only not be able to stay with her 24 hours of the day, but because of COVID, the visiting rules are very restricted in the hospital, so only one of us can go per day, and today's my brother's day. How was today? Right now, both of our kidneys are still considered failing. Oh, God. Um, you know, they did end up removing the dead portion of her pancreas. Okay. And I think that that was the root of the infection, what they had told us about. Yeah. If the surgery goes good tomorrow, then they'll gradually weed her off the ventilator. It is possible for her to achieve some semblance of normality. I guess now I see how much, like, she really mean to all of us. I really know how much I appreciate my mom. Yeah. <laughs> my mom and I's relationship is really hot and cold. I'm telling people, in my own drugs? This thing was a post. This ain't the first time. No, this ain't the first time. This ain't the first time. I'm your mother, OK? I'm your mother. Like it. I ain't been the best daughter at all, and I take accountability for that Every time, but you never do that. <laughs> I 
wish I could go back and even if we did fight, just still tell her I love her at the end of a fight. I never want to sit and wonder if I made her feel loved enough again. You know, we can hope for the best, but we never really know what can happen. How you doing? I'm all right, what about you? I don't know, the best I can. Seeing you like this is, it's really bothering me. You don't even get to see me like that. I be feeling like I'm strong for everybody. I be putting up my united for it real good. Well, you know the job at that. Since my mom's accident, my brother has been staying with me because I kind of just don't want to be alone. And I'm kind of like put in the role where my mom would be. Like, I just want to hold everybody together and be the strong one. So I really don't want to show any sign of like me breaking or weakness. And I felt like I was doing a good job of hiding my feelings and dealing with them on my own. But I guess you can see right through me. If you wasn't here, like them little times that you do step in or I am in there and you just don't even come ask me if I'm okay, you just go ahead and like take the initiative to do whatever need to be done or help with the kids or whatever. Like, I really do appreciate that because them be moments like, I don't want to show too much of what I'm dealing with. It's not that we keeping what's going on away from them. I just don't want it to like emotionally and mentally like put them through something. You know what I'm saying? I've always been very transparent on my kids. But with this situation, it's really touchy. I don't really know what's going on with my mom. I don't have a clear answer to even give them. So until I do, I'll just tell them what they need to know. It's one of the things, no matter what we go through, like, I'm, I'm always here for you if you need me. Especially when it comes down to you and them kids, like, yeah. I'm there. Like, if I had still been feeling that type of way and holding a grudge and me and you had never spoke, I don't know how this would be. Mm. Like, I was to a point where I was okay with it just being me and my kids. And then when I came back here, we've actually grown a lot closer. Sometimes I'm a bitch. I know, I'm, I know that. I take my accountability for that. When we were younger, my brother and my sister and I, like, we were really close. Like, we were just friends on top of being siblings. We kind of grew apart and kind of just focused on ourselves. I focused on my kids and trying to figure my life out in my career. But my mom always told us to stick together. And right now, that is exactly what we're doing. Man, listen, I don't like looking at my mama like that. She talked the first night. And that next day, when I said, you're going to be OK, you're going to be all right, and she shook her hand. No, mama ain't never said that she wasn't going to be OK. Like, she, she ain't. That ain't her. Like, is this gonna be over? When is this gonna be over? When am I gonna be able to hear your voice again? Like, when am I gonna be able to give you a hug? And am I gonna be able to do that? For something like this to happen has really opened my eyes and given me a different perspective on my relationships with people, the things that I have, uh, the accomplishments I've made, the simple things. Cause you never know when that's gonna be taken from you. After a month in the hospital, too many surgeries to count. Um, today, my mom took her last breath. And that's kind of something we were preparing for. Um, it's just hard. I mean, I'm, I'm happy that me and my mom got to 
patch our relationship up and say the things we needed to say to each other and actually like spend our last couple months together just loving one another and being nice to one another. And you know, my mom loved seeing me on that stage. My mom was my number one fan. Like no matter what, we could be <laughs> at our worst and she was not gonna miss a show. So like, I feel like I owe this to her to continue to do that. I started working on this song about a year ago. She was always like, you gonna finish my song, you gonna finish my song. So now I'm finishing it. And it's just everything that I would say to her, everything that she means to me, taught me, you know, it's just my old to her. You know, this is the definition of a mother in the dictionary is a woman in relation to her child or children. Stop and that's just not enough, cause you so much more than that. Yeah. Listen, mama, I hope I'm making you proud. I came a long way from fighting and you kicking me out. I know you still be trying to figure me out. Been through some and called it quit and threw fits. Thought you lost your baby, but look at me now. I was lost for a while. I found my way back home. Owning all my mistakes, cause you ain't did it wrong. Should've been had this talk, cause it been too long. Just want to give you all your flowers for my chance be gone. gone. But Mita invited me to her women's empowerment event at Jasmine's Gender Reveal. I'm taking a bunch of women who want to be artists, and I'm asking them, are you built for this? I'm definitely coming. Where you coming from? You missed the whole panel. I was in South Carolina. My daughter's birthday was yesterday. She ran track, so she had a championship to run. It was just a lot of stuff. Yeah. I would have been here earlier, but, you know, I'm a mother first. I had to take care at home before I came, but I still wanted to make sure I came. I don't know if Amy is still here, but I told her, I said, y'all gonna bump into each other. Your eyebrows went up. Y'all should absolutely have a conversation, because sometimes it'd be weird. I definitely feel like the situation with me and Amy is so tired. Like, it's been going on for years. You keep talking about the same old thing. If it was this much of an issue, my song is still streaming. So I cut the record. She had already cut the record, so I knew nothing about it. You speak about me, you go to the blogs, you right. go to the Right, it wasn't your fault. She the said when she wanted to keep it private, that's why she did Well, how did she want to keep it private if she went to the blogs and, and let me I post think she the thinks you went to the blog first. How? I'm going to grab her so we can, we can squash, squash it right, right here, now. right now. I think Amy's ready to squash things with Brittany, and I think this is a perfect opportunity for me to put them in front of each other. So, y'all never met each other. This is Amy. Okay. Um, yeah, I just felt like, you know, while we're here, let's, let's seize the opportunity. I love to seize the opportunity. Yeah. You know how you feel, what you share with me. Just share what you share with me so that y'all could just be clear, because y'all not clear. Because right. from what she thinks happened, it's different from what you think happened. So, I, you know what? I don't even want it to be, like, childish. I felt like you responded kind of crazy. What was crazy about it? It was just rude. So I felt like the message that I sent to be blocked, I thought that was just crazy. That's why I feel like when you say blocked and all that, you was making things up, because I didn't block you until the blog happened. I didn't even see your DM, or I feel like I was rude or anything. Even when I went live to talk about the situation, I never once, like, was rude about you towards you anything. I said it was a confusion with whoever you work with. You know who we both work with. At the end of the day, if you so mad about a record, it's, it's not even mad. Later. It was just, I feel like. It's three years later. That's what I'm And I'm not mad about it. Only thing you missed it. Okay, you're right about something. It was three years old, but still, how you handled it, you blocked it. But let me, let me, let me, can I try? And, and it's, I the it's the truth. It's the truth. But what and can I, I knew the conversation was gonna go with you, like just like that. That's why I didn't have. But let me, but let me say something. Year ago, but the listen, year listen, before listen, that, and the year before that. Because you got what you want. You think I'm sending this to blogs? Are they eating you up? All your screenshots. You just listen. If ten people say you a hoe, you a hoe. If ten people say you stole a song, you're a thief. Ain't you a comedian? Period. No, 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 no. Aren't you a sly? Who doesn't? And write. Bitch, don't sit in my face and call me no slide and say all this extra. This shit. bitch said it. Cool, bitch. You don't write songs. You are, you're you a slide. Work. I write them all, bitch. You so somebody else in the way I wanted it to go. You wack. What up? You're I what up? To go like you don't me. write, bitch. You don't fight. You don't write. What's bitch, what you wanna do, ho? What you wanna do? <laughs> bitch, pick a pen up, ho. Wait, 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 wait. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. This is not the same Amy that just sat on this panel talking about how rap beef shouldn't happen and it's ridiculous and it stops the money. You are screaming this in front of every single person that sat there and heard you say 
rap beef is stupid. All that, that's rude. We don't have respect for each other. So don't be mad when a person with the worst temper go off. I don't want nothing to talk about. No, walk away. And I'm walking away right now, but I said what I said. You said some amazing things sitting up there on that couch, and then you let somebody come in here and risk facing your head for free. The only thing you can control is you and how you react. You right. Go. You can never control what somebody else does. I know it wasn't you, and it's crazy. This was three years ago, but you don't see the energy you give. You was just looking at her, and you didn't listen. What she said was, she didn't block you because you DM'd her about the record. She blocked you once you went online talking about whatever you were talking about. That's when she blocked you, and that's when she saw the previous DM. I got respect for Yandy, for everything she's done in the industry for women. I definitely got respect for Deb. I need to stay calm. I'm working on not blacking out anymore. I'm working on not Gemini. I'm gonna go check on Renee, make sure she good. There's a door here for you to go home. There's a pathway here for you to walk straight to her. You make that decision on what you want this legacy and this one. Because everywhere you go, you leave a legacy. What you want your legacy to be when you leave here? I'm not really sure after hearing the whole conversation why Amy is still blaming Rennie. You have to sometimes take accountability for being green and being new in this business and being excited. I'm really hoping and praying that she actually has a conversation and listens to Rennie. Okay. How, how I just reacted and responded was not, it was my natural response, but it, it don't make it the right response, but it wasn't the way it should have been. So, as I was saying, I think that you didn't necessarily have any parts to do with what happened. I just felt disrespected from how it was handled. That's why I reacted that way. Okay, and, and I, I understand why you felt how you felt. And I don't mean to cut you off, but even when when I when I caught wind of what was going on, I just told Yandy, I never felt like you was wrong for how you felt. Or I felt like you made it a personal attack on me. So if you feel like I was rude or I didn't care because I didn't say anything to you, I went to who put me in the situation. You got a personal issue with me about something that I necessarily didn't directly do to you. How you know I ain't have that beat first? Go ahead, go ahead. I'm, I don't want to interrupt you because I ain't trying to be you rude. You ain't gonna but... interrupt me. I'm done. This has got to be like a Twilight Zone or something, because this is the same girl who called me everything but a child of God. Now you're standing here apologizing. Like, make it make sense. I feel like how the situation grew, I, if it could have been done over, I wish it could have been handled a little different. Me and you, because again, we don't know each other, so it wasn't like I could just call and be like, hey. But that's the thing, I felt so wrong in the situation, like I I really would have. I think that you you can at least understand like, what we trying to trying to pull off, it'd be a lot. Now that we in this year, I don't really want no smoke. We in Atlanta, there's been plenty of places I've been seeing you, but it was like, stay over there, I'm gonna stay over here. And it shouldn't be like that if a conversation And I'll say, I should, have, I should have reached out and responded in a different way. Yandy was right. Keep my reputation high. I don't want to scare the money off. I'm trying to make it in this industry. And I'm just hoping that we can stay on this vibration and just keep the dialogue going so we can get back to business, back to the money, and leave the bull behind us. I'm just going to take this situation and just learn better with it. Instead of taking it so personal, like, well, her, she ain't finna say Maybe my thought could have been like, maybe she getting some straightening in the corner with them. Maybe she, yeah, I don't, it, it was just a silence. That's all it So, is. I get it. I'm yeah. so glad you walked back over. I thought yes. that was amazing. Damn, I'm glad, I'm glad. I'm not even gonna say thank you because it wasn't nothing to think, but I'm glad you walked over. And I'm glad Great you sat and, and relaxed and chilled. Yes. And thank you, baby. Because Lord you. knows. Thank you. Thank uh, you. These, we got enough beef out these here. These shoes are too high for me to be trying to break up anything. Oh, we wasn't going to go there, no, but I'm glad. I just like, um, But y'all got it out. So I took Sierra's advice and decided to meet with Erica. Regardless of how weird she's been acting, it's petty and I want to move past it. I've only mentioned my beef with Rennie to Sierra and Amy. And you know, my thing with Rennie is, you shouldn't be mad at me, I should be mad at you. Are you familiar with Rennie Rucci? I had like a weird situation with her. It had to do with finesse. She had been like hitting him up and me and him are like dating. And this is where, okay, I'm just gonna follow you. And ever since then, it's just been like a weird space for us. At the end of the day, Rennie, like, it's healthier to just air the beef out than to keep it in, so here I am. But a bad bitch can't change overnight. You ordered something already? That's not egg like. Yeah, that's what I said, so what's up? 
you know, last time I seen you, we was having a conversation. Mm -hmm. You had a problem. This was just weird. I feel like you did weird. I think even saying, like, I had the problem with you is weird, but go ahead. You don't think hitting somebody up that I'm with at the time is weird? But Nancy's like, well, well, she hitting me up saying she want to work, and she hitting me up, and you know, I'm like, well, why she hitting you up if she know that we are a thing, and me and her kind of was cool, at least before that situation. I'm tense from the jump with Rennie because she should understand that talking to my ex while I'm with him is a big problem, especially when I put time into this relationship. You know, he was in jail. For you to know the background of the situation, why would you even do that? And Amy said the bitch stole her song, so is it really a reach for her to try to steal my man? The girl has no morals, no ethics, no hit songs. Like, what do you have? I'm not gonna just keep acting like I'm cool with the bitch or friends with me, so I'm gonna follow her. For you to just go straight to like unfollowing and having an issue that I don't even know about and so set up a dress. Was it happening or was it not happening? No, when y'all got together, I stopped all communication. We wasn't even talking about first of all from the jump. Our first conversation was in the club and he told me about how he made a song about me while he was locked up. So that was it. The first time you seen I him was never the last seen time. Him Ever. Okay, we'll see. Well, that's where the misunderstanding was because but he told me something. again, the communication line was there for you to call me or, or write me, hey, hit me up. I feel you, but you're not somebody that I'm just close with. Are you well, you were talking about my, my so why we ain't close. We ain't got to be long with If you can say that to me, you can hit me up about a what I'm saying. You right. Meanwhile, you slept with my fiance and was under our pictures doing all kind of after me and him got together. Why would I come tell you about my fiance and I was happy? You? So I'm supposed to say, hey, girl, by the way, if we was you I feel like that's fake as so let's be clear, Erica is a hypocrite because you're upset about a man that I never touched, never talked to, didn't do any of the that you saying, and you would have known that if you had to send a DM and just ask a question. Meanwhile, you actually mine before he and I were even together and didn't say anything to me about it. I should be mad, not you. You already did weird to me. I ain't do nothing to you. You really don't matter that much to me for it to even be an issue at all. Rini, you brought it up Rini, to people about Rini. me not speaking to you. It Rini. obviously was an issue. You know you. I don't give a f about that. What you give a f about? Everything but you. <laughs> Girl, please. The baby hairs have definitely moved past the eyebrows into her vision because the bitch can't see clearly at all. Rini, we two different people, baby. That's what it's giving. We, Rini, we definitely two different people. Two different levels. Definitely, no. Two different levels. Baby, please don't ever, two ever try levels. to flatter yourself like that. See? Everything I have, you want it all the way down to my fiance. So what? That is weird energy. You need some therapy. Now you need to speak to somebody. Huh? 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 You need some therapy. Mm. Like mental. Mm. Yeah. Since I sat Excuse down, me. you have said Brandy, you know. You're you in keep denial. making us in denial. You keep making us assumptions. Wise, you keep you're in denial. That's a couple wine. So peaceful. About as much peace as I can get around here. You okay? Like I hear it in your voice. Everything is just hitting me at one time. The altercation with me and Erica Banks has definitely been on my mind a lot. I just didn't realize I was in a place where somebody could push my buttons that much. After I had time to think about things, I realized that grief, grieving, figuring out how to work through emotions or even running from emotions has a lot to do with how I responded to Erica. And I love Carly to death. When my mom was in the hospital before she passed, Carly called and checked on me nearly every day. So like, I feel really comfortable talking to her about how I feel mentally and emotionally about everything that's going on. So you told me a little bit about what happened to Erica. Bye. How did it get to the point where like, it got physical? She said, you, you need therapy, you're delusional. I don't even remember the last thing she said. I just, from the therapy comment, I was checked out. Like. I threw my drink. So that's how it started? Yeah, and I was standing up mm -hmm. over her. Over her? Yeah. It ain't her. It ain't an argument with her, an argument with Amy, an argument with anybody. Like, it's really like other that I need to address. Adjusting, like trying to figure this out without my mom. I get that she had a lot on her shoulder, but everything just started coming out. It's so important to check on your strong friends because mental health is serious and never know how your friends are doing. Maybe I do need to go to therapy. Maybe that's why I like that. I mean, people who lose 
someone in their life, you need to talk to somebody just to let it out, just to cry and let it out. That's all I've been doing. That's all I've been doing. So I, I do feel like I need to talk to somebody. I need to finally like address like that all together, losing her, how different everything is. I haven't had a weak moment because I feel like I can't be weak. I feel like I can't be vulnerable. I feel like I can't show any type of like crap because and if I like do, everybody else will. You. My mom was my whole support system, my whole family support system. The minute she took her last breath, I felt like I was like a 15-year-old girl again. I didn't know what to do. It's really showing me like you have to take the time to work on the problems and address things. And if you keep running from them, it's gonna make everything else worse. It's almost gonna be two years since I lost my mom and I think I'm just now acknowledging it. My kids are just now acting like they notice she isn't here. I didn't even get out of bed. She not here again. Oh, she not coming back. So I gotta acknowledge the problem first. Yeah. Like, and I think that's where I am. I think I'm now just understanding, like, you're not okay. You can't run from things. You can't mask things with money or career. You gotta actually sit down and, like, face it. It's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay I hate to. That. No, but it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to open up. If you can do something about it, why not do something about it? Y'all gotta get rid of y'all attention. I'm, I wanna get, I'll get rid of my attention just because I don't want no issue with you to cause weird energy. I feel like that conversation that we had at the Women's Empowerment event, as grown women, we knew it could have went better, but I feel like, honestly, it wasn't on my heart that day to do. Mine either. Today, I feel like, I feel like it was unnecessary. I did perceive it as being messy, but after hearing them, they like, maybe she wasn't being messy. Maybe she said what all of us said, but. But I said that to you. Yeah, but because we already had our issue, I'm like. Which is why I was so transparent with you yeah. about it. It wasn't an Amy thing. Yeah, it yeah. was a, we talked about everything right. that was said. We have to have a, con a real conversation because we two strong-minded women who, if you feel your way, you standing on that, and I feel my way, and I'ma stand on that. Right. And that first real impression of you, like, that left a bad taste in my mouth. I've never came out of my mouth and disrespected you the way that you disrespected me. At the Women's Empowerment Network, neither one of us really accepted each other's apology that day. We didn't do it on our time. We did it to people please, to kinda, okay, we're playing nice, so. I think that that was the real issue, and that led me to being so dramatic and extra with Rennie. We in the same industry. It's enough going against us already. I agree. That's it. The that we mad about, we ain't do to each other. Right. I came here with good vibes. I same. Ain't, I'm like, uh, if we can, me and her still gonna argue, we can argue in Atlanta. Yeah. I ain't trying to argue out the country with you. I, I, I don't Atlanta. either. It ain't even that oh, deep for me. So like, yeah. I'm so glad Amy and I clear the air and let it the go. A lot of things could be, you know, nipped in the butt with a little communication. Y'all having fun? Come eat. I'm getting a pool after we eat. Where your brother at? I don't know. We're in South Carolina today celebrating Cordon's 15th birthday with some family and friends. After talking to Spice, I really do want to work on this co-parenting relationship. I invited him, and I hope he keep it cute. He come in here and act like he got some sense. And I don't have to light this bitch up. Where everybody at? It's just gonna be us? I just wanna have a little time, just us and your dad. What's up? Happy birthday, son. What? Thank you. Okay. I don't know. Opening the seat. Should I share it on the table? Hold on, don't open it yet. Wait till we sing happy birthday and stuff later so everybody can see it. All right. What's up? Hey, how y'all doing? Good, how you doing? This is different. It's so awkward when my kid's dad sits at the table. We never do combined events at all. So it's tense right now because the kids know we have things that we need to talk about and work on. We're scared to say the wrong things to each other. Everybody's kind of just on edge. Hey! hey. <laughs> 
And this is my kid's dad, Donald. Donald is Spice. Nice to meet you. I heard a lot about you. Thank you, baby. As a single mom myself, I'm really glad that Rennie took the step to start this relationship with her child's father. Putting ourselves in uncomfortable positions is a part of this healing journey. It's a part of helping us learn how to talk through situations, even when we're uncomfortable. So, Decor, if you want to show oh, her where you. she can go change her clothes at, um, and me and you could go talk, because okay. we got it. lots to talk about. Yeah. It's one thing to say in anger management, what you're willing to do, what you're going to do. It's another thing to actually have to do it. So how you feeling? I'm all right. It's a little awkward. I'm trying to open up the doors to co-parent, but I still just, I have you my do, reservations. You're doing a good job. At least, you know, you're trying to make it happen. So I feel like you're doing a good job. Us sitting at the table together, it's like, this is new. When he first came home, we would have separate everything. Y'all couldn't just be Yeah, in the we same can't space. coexist like that. So, like I said, for us to be able to even just sit here, it's okay. there's not no insults being thrown or anything right. like that. Like, it's a big step. I still have my reservations. So I'm not going to let my guard all the way down. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you really got to show and prove, like, you about really being a be. parent. I think we all have healing to do. We all have to work on ourselves. It's a yeah. lot of that I've been running from. Yeah conflicts that need to be addressed. Absolutely. You, I mean, so your baby daddy's just sitting there. You want to at least try to have a conversation yeah. with him so he don't feel awkward. OK, accountability it's a partner. <laughs> Manu already kind of nervous, but the greatest thing is that she made the step to invite him, so I'm proud of her. Hey. I'm all right. It's a little awkward. Yeah, it is, but I just want to uh, kind of apologize for, you know, miscommunications and for not being around the kids and for a long time, I didn't really understand them like that. So, appreciate you holding it down. They're healthy, they're good, they're smart, they're respectful. I appreciate it. And I apologize for all the stuff and attitude I gave you and stuff like that. Wow. I, I really appreciate that, for real, though. Um, I want us to be able to, like, really raise our kids together. I don't want to miss out on the time that we do have. We're giving them memories of, like, actually seeing us be able to get along and knowing that if anything was to happen, I don't just got my mom, but I got my dad too. And like, I want them to have that. That's why I let everything go, especially like, you know, you losing your mom. My mom was the second parent. Right. Me. Like, she helped me with everything. Right. But I don't have that no more, so we kind of need to be able, like the Corey said, to talk to each other. Um, so we can like work stuff like that out. I'm so shocked that Donald even apologized. Like, he has so much pride. So to put that to the side, be this sincere, give me my flowers, this is a whole new Donald. Maybe all it really did take was me offering this olive branch. I like this. It, it was a little awkward, and I didn't know how it was going to go. And if we just like. agreed to, yeah, to handle each other with respect and communicate better and work on co-parenting and being friends, like, I like that. Okay. I'm with it too. We love that. <laughs> we love that. <laughs> I want this. So these are the local shamans and they will be blessing you guys today. To protect your career and make you be an example in life for allowing us to bless you. I knew a place like this will have like the type of cleansing energy we need. All of us are bringing some type of baggage with us, something that we want to heal from, something we want to let go. And I definitely feel peace and calm in my spirit during the ceremony. I feel like I'm leaving a lot of baggage and trauma here in Belize, right here at the ruins. So I was like, you know what, let's close Belize out with a cute little dinner after my performance. Today was good, though. I really um, just enjoyed the vibe, the moments. I just love how much we all put in effort into we growing did. and becoming better women. Rennie, did you feel like you healed from this trip? Did you let go off of anything? I think I got better insight on my feelings. The Mayan temples were like a really great part of this healing journey. Being around these ladies and watching them open up and share things and we're working on overcoming things together has really helped me heal more than anything or even just learn how to heal by watching other people try to do it.
you hold on to things and it turns into a grudge that you really don't even realize you hold it. I need to let certain of the petty stuff go. Yeah. I really worked hard to make it to being on the big stage in front of thousands of people and I'm here now. But now that I'm living in my dream, why am I triggered off of a little thing? I was moved by your performance. Thank you. I had a good time. So I, and I really enjoyed being able to cheer you on. Like, and that's what, that's a lot of, what I, kind of, yeah. I love that about yeah. all of us, though. Like, we, we was no really matter excited. what, like, everybody support each other, yeah. like, and yeah. cheer each other yeah. on. Well, are you ready to apologize to Banks? I'm not apologizing. Why the hell you see how the mood changed? <laughs> now, I know we here healing and everything, and I have made a lot of strides in the right direction, but I don't know what the hell Shekana talking about me apologize. I could have handled the situation differently. We could have a conversation about what happened, why it happened, and find solutions. Since you're on this, you know, journey, what do you think that triggered you at that time? Huh. Like, when you start speaking about my mental health and and what I'm going through, that's and telling what me did? I need therapy and things like that, I know exactly what you're talking about. Bitch, I do need a lot of therapy. Yeah, that's what really made me say we need to go to anger management. We, need, I would thank her for that. She was spoken. Yeah, so it was like that really set me off. It's okay, so weird. what about you and Carly? Cause y'all was besties, and yeah, I feel like you and Carly <laughs> Red, and I feel like y'all should fix that whole situation. Oh. These bitches are draining me. Everybody who's supposed to be getting healed and ready to release this <laughs> Spice can't make up with Carly Rae. Rennie can't make up with Erica. Sierra can't make up with Bambi. I can make up with all these bitches. I'm not holding no grudge with nobody. Y'all were no, best friends. No, we were close, we were yeah, friends, but we weren't best friends. This woman back. cry about you every oh, so day she because she fan. knows she, I, I was a good friend to her. How are you healing from what happened with Erica Mena? Oh my God. Is it my, is it a spice night or what? <laughs> when she come with a racism thing, I was so used to it that it's like my system is immune to racism. I, this is no shade to any of you that's sitting at the table. I feel like darker skinned black woman get it a little bit harsher. They used to call me Blackie. They used to call me Tar. They called me everything that was close to Black that they could find. I don't have nothing to fix with her, men with her. I chopped her right off. What you've been through with this situation, how it made you feel, the colorist, comments, everything. How are we gonna heal? Like, what are you gonna I, do for you? I can uh, fix racism. I will always experience it. So it's just something I have to face. My older sister is your complexion. Yeah, she is. You know how many times we've been in a room together? together? And they will acknowledge me like we didn't walk in together because they feel like we're not together because we don't look the same. We came out of the same woman. Growing up, you don't know how much resent they could make my siblings have for me. Yeah. Or whatever they can like. So I want you to understand. I'm like, give me a minute. Excuse me. Yeah, go for it. Y'all done bought a b to my hair a minute. I hate that racist. <sighs> I Why are you that? crying? I just don't like that for black women. I've, I've experienced it all my life and I just hate it and it, it's just nothing I can fix. So it's like, when we at the table and you're asking like, how, how can I heal from it? I'll never heal from I, this. I, I wanna figure it out. You're my friend, I'm here with you. I care about how you feel and I care about how we can move forward. But you can't carry that trauma around forever. Like we we, we can't be but we gotta like, figure you know, out. I how carry to... it for my daughter as well. Let's teach awareness, but let's not teach trauma. Let's teach yeah. confidence. Let's redirect it. Do you ever have this conversation with your sisters? Yeah, so when I was reading her diary, she wrote in it that she wished she looked like me. Aww. So when stuff like that happened, it really just she did. Damn. Right, we had a teacher tell us we wasn't real sisters before. It's a battle that I fought for my sisters, so I understand. This is so sad. Y'all are a good, great group together. And thank you, Ren, for just being a sweet girl. We love you. And I love you too.